Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Snow showers still around with us. They'll be gone by tomorrow, but when will the warm temperatures get here? We'll check that out, plus more snow for the weekend coming up. All right, Ben, also fighting to play. A group of college athletes in danger of having two straight seasons canceled. But we begin with frustrated parents in a Macomb County community who are now trying to recall members of their school board. They are upset at Chippewa Valley Schools for offering in-person learning for students. Language on the recall petitions has been approved and they'll be kicking off a signature drive this weekend. Mara McDonald is live tonight in Clinton Township and Mara, this comes as the district will be discussing plans to increase in-person options this Monday. And yet still, this parents group says that it has launched a recall effort against four members of the school board here. Let me show you why. Recalling anybody during a pandemic is not an easy thing. Backers will have to collect 12,000 signatures in 180 days. Our biggest issue is that they took that choice away from us as parents. You know, they, they had the choice for those parents that didn't want their kids in school and then took our choice for those that did away from us. The frustration goes back to last August when the board decided on only virtual learning and frustrated parents say it's been like pulling teeth to get any in-person option whatsoever. Frank Bednard, who is the president of the school board, says he gets it. Whatever decision we make, segments of our community are going to be upset. I mean, we understand that's frustrating for folks and uh, living with this pandemic going and trying to make the best decisions. After the recall language was approved and neighboring districts announced plans to offer more in-person days, the school district will likely opt to increase in-person learning next week. I think they're reactionary. Um, the, the history over the past several months has shown that they tend to react when other districts around them react. For parents who support the recall, it's all just a little too little. Bednard says the district and board has challenges when it comes to executing in-person learning, especially at the high school level. Dakota High School is the biggest you know, high school in the state right now, and Chippewa Valley High School is just behind that. So we have special challenges we have to overcome uh, when we have that many children. Back here live, the school board is expected to take up more in-person options this Monday at its meeting. The likelihood of having those options offered would probably take place the second week of March. Still, parents tell me that is not going to stop the recall effort. We're live in Clinton Township tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Local four and we'll stay with it. All right, Mara. Now the winter weather is delaying shipments of COVID vaccines to Michigan and other states. The state says Pfizer shipments did not go out Monday and Moderna doses weren't shipped Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday because of the delay. The state wants those with vaccine appointments to confirm them before showing up to get the shot. Tonight, a University of Washington study finds pregnant women are at a 70% higher risk of coronavirus. That comes as Pfizer announces its vaccine trial for pregnant women has now started. Today, Michigan is reporting 888 new cases and 85 more deaths. President Biden will be visiting West Michigan tomorrow to tour Pfizer's plant in Portage. The trip, you may recall, was supposed to take place today. It was postponed due to the weather problems in Washington. President set to arrive at Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport at 1.45 p.m. We'll have live coverage of his visit beginning tomorrow on Local 4 News at 4 p.m. All right, slippery conditions out on the roads tonight after getting even more snow. And Ben is tracking another round coming for the weekend, Ben. It doesn't want to quit, guys. It's just a little here and a little there, but it is starting to add up uh, even more uh, on top of what we already have. Let's go to Storm Tracker 4. There are still snow showers out there. This stuff is stubborn and doesn't want to leave, although you can tell from what's going on out there in Lansing, that's the back edge, and it is making progress now towards the east. So uh, this stuff is not long for the world and should be gone by the time we wake up tomorrow morning. A little better clearing option there you can see from the uh, southern Michigan point of view. Now let's take a look at the timing of this as it leaves tomorrow morning. Uh, this is tonight you can see those snow showers will start to fade maybe tomorrow we're going to get this little wave off of lake michigan so there could be some late snow showers but that doesn't look like it'll be any significant accumulation maybe a fresh coating if you're clearing off the sidewalk but we've got more snow coming as we get into the weekend sunday and into monday you can see we've got a couple inches uh, at least across the southern end of the state so we'll look at that coming up but as far as the impacts go the temperatures are another big story they're actually working in our favor we'll show you how warm things get as we head into next week coming up in a few minutes guys all right ben
University of Michigan Dearborn athletes making a passionate plea tonight after the school scraps the spring sports season for the second straight year. The decision was made yesterday despite all other schools in their conference continuing on with their sports. But as Jason Colthorpe reports, those pleas are being heard tonight. Eventually, all of this snow is going to melt, and when it does, U of M Dearborn athletes desperately want to be able to take the field because if they don't, for some, that will mean losing half of their careers. Initially, I was very angry. When Madeline Skeen and the rest of her softball teammates got the email Wednesday canceling the spring sports season again, it was heartbreaking. And then I think about two hours later, I was crying to my mom and my mom was crying with me. Back in December, I got a shoulder surgery done just so I could play my senior year and now it just got taken away from me for really no reason at all. Well, the reason, according to the university, was other schools were not planning to adhere to COVID safety protocols. But Skeen started making calls of her own and shared her findings at today's Board of Regents meeting. Other schools in our conference have confirmed with us that they said they were willing to do whatever they needed to in order to play us based off of our safety expectations. All in all, Chancellor Grasso and whoever else concedes to him is responsible for all of these college careers that have been ruined. Chancellor Dominico Grasso also announced during the meeting that after some more discussions, the decision to cancel the season might have some late game drama after all. New information has come to light. So we are, as soon as possible, going to confer with Dr. Preeti Malani, our chief health officer, and uh, revisit the decision in light of the new information. The biggest thing is that we are finally heard and actually being listened to this time instead of just told to keep our mouths shut and do what we're told. That new information, by the way, is more stringent health care guidelines conference wide, including a mask mandate. Tomorrow morning, U of M Dearborn will be meeting with its chief health officer at 730 to discuss whether to reverse this decision to cancel the season. We'll let you know what happens. I'm Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. Uh, all right, Jason. Meanwhile, a group of Metro Detroit restaurant owners is suing the state over the COVID shutdowns. The Macomb County Restaurant Bar and Banquet Association filed the lawsuit. It alleges that under the state's constitution, owners are entitled to be repaid for their losses from the pandemic shutdowns. Just compensation must be rendered. It doesn't say, well, unless the state really, really needs it, or they don't have to give just compensation if there's an epidemic. So, I mean, that's what we're looking for. It's the state's constitutional duty to remit money to these businesses to make them whole again. The state denied comment as this is an ongoing lawsuit. The restaurant group is holding a press conference tomorrow. Power has now been restored to most of Texas, but now millions are facing water disruptions. After days without electricity, there are still long lines and empty shelves at grocery stores across the state. Officials estimate this week's winter storm will be the most costly natural disaster in Texas history. Meanwhile, Republican Senator Ted Cruz addressed reporters tonight from his home in Houston. He faced heavy backlash over the past 24 hours for flying to Mexico for a family vacation as millions of Texas families are still dealing with the fallout of the deadly storm. I was trying to be a dad, and, and all of us have made decisions. When you've got two girls who have been cold for two, two days and haven't had heater power, and they're saying, hey, look, we don't have school. Why don't we go? Let's get out of here. I, I think there are a lot of parents that would be like, all right, let me, if I can do this, great. That's what I wanted to do. Cruz called the vacation a mistake and later said he began second-guessing the trip the moment he got on the plane on Wednesday. All right, still ahead, this year's most dependable car brands just revealed. We'll see how the big three ranked coming up. A life-saving rescue during this week's snowstorm. How one Michigan woman was saved after being stranded in the snow with no cell service. But first, a gas station customer has his gun snatched from his pocket inside the gas station next.